Tames. I'm Miss Green. And this is episode 22. We're coming to you live from the copy room. So grab your study guide and get ready to go. Get a pen or pencil. And get ready to go. Uh, Mrs. Green, what kind of scientists studies the things we're studying? Like, I know, I think they studied rocks and minerals, but they also study the layers of the earth and plate tectonics. What do you call those scientists? I think it's called a geologist. That's right, a geologist. Well, tell me, what part of the sandwich is a geologist's favorite? I don't know, the lettuce? The crust! No! Today we are going to be going through the study guide. So get your study guide out, or if you happen to have lost it, um, get out another piece of paper, because you will be turning this in. All right, I'm trying to... Um, Zoom in. Here we go. All right, Planet Earth Study Guide. All right, first question. Draw and label the four layers of the Earth. You should definitely already know this, but here they are. The crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. Pause anytime you need to to be sure and write this down. Also, you should know that the lithosphere is composed of the crust and the very top of the mantle. In the asthenosphere, remember that's the gooey layer that's right underneath the lithosphere. Here's a picture of the different layers, the four main layers. All right, let's go to the next question. It says, what is number two? What is the thinnest layer of the earth? That is the crust. The crust is the thinnest layer. It seems pretty thick to us, but compared to the other layers, it is the thinnest. Number three, what is the hottest layer of the earth? That would be the inner core. Remember, the deeper we go down underneath the surface, the higher the temperature, the warmer it gets. Number four, give an everyday example of something that can be used to model layers of the earth. And we used an apple. We said that the peel was very thin compared to the rest of the object. Just like the crust is very thin compared to the entire Earth. All right, what is Pangaea? It is the supercontinent, one giant landmass before the continental drift. Remember to pause it if you need to. Here's a picture of what they hypothesized that it might have looked like with uh, all the continents together as one. All right, so let's go down to um, number six. What evidence do scientists have to prove the existence of Pangaea? We've got some different things that uh, make us think that it's probably um, what happened. First one is that the shapes of the continent fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Also, there's fossil clues. They found fossils on different continents and um, say that possibly those were not separate continents at one time, but one land mass, and that would explain the fossil clues. Same thing with the mountain belts, that there are mountain belts on continents that are across the ocean from each other that look like if the continents were placed together that they'd just be one long mountain belt, and so that is also evidence. Number seven says... Where are most of the volcanoes located and why? And that's in the Ring of Fire, which is around the Pacific Ocean, around the Pacific Plate, at the plate boundaries. And, be, and the, re, the answer to why is because it's at the plate boundaries, and when um, there's boundaries, they can create volcanoes. Here's a picture of the Ring of Fire. Here's the United States. Most of the maps kind of go this direction, but this one shows us the entire thing. It's it's really a huge area when you look at a globe. Um, it goes all the way down from here, up here. All those little red marks. Oops, it's kind of messing up. All those little red marks are where the volcanoes are, so you can kind of see that. Here's another one in the around the Pacific Plate. Um, showing we've got the this Nazca plate in there as well all right let's look at the next question it says number eight how do we know that plates move well we've got some evidence for that oh it says what is the evidence 
Well, we're going to write it down. First is you can, oops, sorry, you can measure the continents. Remember we said that uh, North America and Europe are moving further away from each other by about one inch a year. So we can measure the movement. Also some of the other evidence um, are earthquakes. If they're indicating that there's movement underneath the surface, causing movement at the surface. Volcanoes are forming, indicating that there's movement underneath, as well as the seafloor spreading. These are all evidence that the plates are moving. Number nine, why do they move? Well, the convection currents um, cause them to move, and that is in the mantle. Remember here is um, showing the convection currents in the mantle. This one over here is Oops, sorry, it's actually going clockwise, you can see. It's moving clockwise. The convection currents underneath in the mantle then would cause the movement of the plates up above. Number 10, what does conduction mean? We haven't really talked about this in this unit, but conduction is when heat is transferred through objects, like if you... Um, are cooking in a metal pan, you don't want to just touch a metal handle. You want to use a pot holder because it's going to be hot because the heat is transferring uh, through the metal. Um, then the next question says, what does convection mean? And that is heat transferred through liquid movement, the movement of liquid. That's how, that's what convection is. And that's what we have in the mantle, that hot molten lava. All right, here's the next page, and it says list the nine names, or the names of the nine major tectonic plates, and I've listed them here for you. Let me see, I think I have it again. Yeah, here you go. Pacific, and I put a little star by it and put it's the largest plate. Two, North American. Three, South American. Four, African. 5, Eurasian, 6, Indo-Australian, I think maybe we just wrote Australian before, that's all right, 7, Antarctic, 8, Nazca, and 9, Arabian, that's the Saudi Arabian um, country that kind of, kind of has their own plate. Anyway, if you'll write those down. Okay, so here's a map showing the divisions of the different plates, and you have a map on your study guide and you need to sort of draw those lines so pause here and uh, draw those that helps you here's the different lines of course it does not have to be perfect and you can either label them with the number or with the name pause if you need to Antarctic plates down at the bottom also here's just how I did mine Obviously, it does not have to be perfect, but just so you can kind of get an idea. Here's mine. Enlarged a little bit. And I just uh, wrote the number to match. All right. So you can do that. There's those names again. All right. So let's see what the next question is. The next question is... Um, how do plates move? And we've talked about this a number of times. It's those convection currents in the mantle. Um, the heat is rising, and then it cools down and goes back down again and cycles. Uh, here's another picture of it. You can see, like, this center one is moving clockwise. So the plate on top of it would move in that same direction. Here, this uh, convection current is moving, moving counterclockwise, so the plate would move in that direction. So it's the convection currents that cause the plates to move. All right, now, these next questions, I kind of mixed up the answers, but that's okay. Number 12, it says, what events occur when plates collide? And I wrote convergent because that's the name of the boundary, when plates go towards each other or collide 
it's the convergent boundary. And I kind of mixed 12 and 13 together, and that's okay. So just make sure for 12 and 13 you have these answers. Subduction, when the plates collide, one of them, the more dense plate, will go underneath the other one and down into the mantle. That's called subduction. You might have mountains forming when the plates uh, run into each other. It kind of pushes up the land. Might have some volcanoes forming. And you also might have some earthquakes. So all of those four things can be happening when there's a convergent boundary. And that's really 12 and 13 together. So just for 12 and 13, make sure you have those four items. Uh, I think I have a picture. I do. Look here. All right, so here's the... Here you've got the continental crust joining another continental crust and we've got a mountain range forming up at the top and see part of this crust is um, subducting down underneath and that um, crust is being destroyed because it's going underneath and into the mantle. We have another picture, here we go. Um, this is an oceanic crust and a continental crust colliding. We've got some volcanoes that are forming and some more subduction. We've got a trench here, and then, um, oh, like I said, yeah, the volcanoes. So um, then 13 and 14, kind of the same thing. I'm not sorry, sorry, not 13, 14. 14 and um, 15 kind of go together. What events occur and what landforms occur when plates pull apart? And I wrote divergent, right, divergent. That's the kind of boundary it's called when they're pulling apart. Um, and we have things like seafloor spreading, where we get new land, and we also see volcano, volcanoes being formed where the plates are pulling apart. I think I have some pictures of that, too. Yeah, here we go. So if uh, the plates, which are, remember is the lithosphere, are pulling apart, then there's this uh, empty space, and the magma um, rises up um, from the uh, mantle, and gets up here and then it cools down and uh, forms new land. I think there's a, oh, I thought I had another picture. Oh, oh, I know. Let's see, go back to this. The very last question is just what is seafloor spreading, which occurs at divergent boundaries. And I wrote plates pull apart, magma rises from the mantle, cools, forming new land. All right, so plates pull apart, magma rises from the mantle, it cools and it forms new land. And then here's the picture that I had. Um, the two uh, plates pulling apart from each other. And then you see the mantle down here. And uh, the magma rises up. And um, it's spreading out. Just like when you see the mid-Atlantic ridge that we looked at from Google Earth. Um, new land is forming there where the plates are moving apart. And the magma from the mantle comes up and forms new land. All right, oh, here's another one of it. So you can see the convection at the bottom. It's coming up. We've got this older crust here that's moving out as their plates are moving away from each other. Then you've got this young crust or this new land um, forming when the magma cools down. And so that's seafloor spreading. All right, I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions, you can go back over this, pause, um, maybe you can zoom in, I don't know if you can or not, um, and make sure that this gets turned in. It's going to be due on Thursday, that's also the day of your test, and so make sure you go over this and use it to study. Turn this in and you will be well prepared for our test on planet Earth, layers of the Earth and plate tectonics. All right, that's it. Episode 22, Sassy Science. Peace out.